Before we get started, you need to understand why people breach where they do. Number one, a gate. This uses wood repair kits to repair and is much easier to destroy than stone. The downside is it's much easier to defend. Typically, you're going to front door keep is what they call it when it's not protected at all. There's no one there and you don't anticipate any resistance for a minute or so. If you have max siege, you can take down one of these front doors in literally a minute. So that's the benefit of it and the disadvantage. When I say defend, every single person should be doing something. A proper defense has everyone running counter siege and or specifics responsibility. So for instance, let's say they breach the front door. I'm gonna have one designated oil person here. It's gonna run two oils on the breach. Remember, you can run one and shotgun, just like we talked about in the previous video. So once I set my oils up just like this, I'm gonna pour, escape, pour, escape, get off. I'm just gonna go back and forth. You can operate three, but two is just sufficient. That's gonna pour it right on the front. If they're using a battering ram, those people will either die or they're gonna to have to use tons of resources to heal them through it, or they're gonna to have to use a million rams. Remember, if you're playing solo or in a group, everyone has a job to do. Your first thing should be, well, is this taken? Right here, these oils. No, yes, okay, then you can go up to the next spot. Well, guess what? There's oil ledges right here. You can set two on as well. That's gonna hit the foreground. Oh, someone's sieging already. Ooh, good, we can show some live action. Another thing you should do is have counter siege up. Counter siege is fire blister or covenant trebuchets. Fire blister right here. You want to make every single inch of this area counter siege. Make it a complete nightmare for the opposing team to deal with. Remember, don't have one siege set down. Everyone should be running two if you're on siege duty. Another really useful thing I don't see people using often enough is Razor Caltrops. If you're a stamina build and have this available, do it. It's for the reduced speed. That reduction in speed will make it very, very hard for them to move around. They'll be constantly taking damage and burn through the resources left, right, and center. Okay, so let's say you defend them there. They don't want to go that way. Well, there's, there's a stone option. Now, these two windowed walls here, it's very important when you're breaching to not shoot the door. The door or the postern door, postern house, has a different HP. You see my top of my screen there, postern house, and then keep wall. If you destroy the, the house, it does nothing to the wall. If you destroy the wall, the wall will come down and you can enter the breach. Make sure you're hitting the wall. Now, defending the wall is the exact same premise as you would with the front door, except you don't need oils because people aren't gonna be up on top, generally speaking, putting it down. The way to properly defend a keep number two is Everyone should be doing a job, number one. Number two, know your fallback points. Essentially, if you have a large enough force, force they're going to get through this. Know your fallback points. Fallback point one is if they're just about to breach through, they've just breached, I go th straight through the front door. Why? All these NPCs, all these NPCs, they're going to help you. And they do negates um, and other things that will basically thwart the enemy for a while. Now, if there's 600 people coming to the front, obviously you're not gonna get through and you're gonna go there. But you can hold here with fire blisters right here and kind of pepper them. You lure a couple, two or three gankers to come in your area. But be careful, once you hit that siege button, get off, don't be vulnerable. Another thing you can do on the outer wall siege is get up trebuchets. I don't see enough people using fire trebuchets. So why are fire trebuchets good? Oh, let me show you. I don't even have one in my inventory. Bad Delta. All right. So we get a fire trebuchet and we get it slotted with all my other fun stuff. The nice thing about fire trebuchets is let's say all the walls are taken, you can still hit the outside with the fire treb. So everyone's on the wall, make every inch of this keep hostile. So you see how far you can hit with this thing? So don't just stand around with your thumb up, you know what, if you see these top ledges are taken with counter siege. Put a fire treb down. Now you can operate three trebuchets instead of two ballistas because it doesn't recharge as fast, but it does a lot more damage. Okay, another thing you're coming through, you've also probably heard of something called troll repairing. 
Troll repairing is essentially repairing the wall, just sitting here and clicking it as they siege. It's at full health right now, but if it doesn't drop below 95%, you can sit here and just continue to repair it, repair it, repair it. So oftentimes when you're doing a breach, uh, you'll see the wall goes to 95% and then back up to 100. What it means is there's about six or seven guys, gals, whatever, sitting here repairing. What you need to do is hit it with five or more uh, trebuchets at once. That will put it down to 95 and no longer can they just troll repair it. So you know that. Okay, so you fall and back in. Now you want to know your fallback points here. So the inner is much more of the same. You have counter siege up on the front door again, but you have these grates right here. These grates let oil come through. And you can put it all around the edges, all around the edges. Basically, the fallback method that I like to use most is top side is fallback point one on the inner. Fallback point two, if you get overwhelmed, you're going to come, run down here. You can jump off here and get in these cubby holes or whatever you want to call them right here. Because you can put a fire booster down in these little cubby holes by the transit guards, use the NPCs, and not get poured with oil. So this is the ideal spot to make a last stand. Plus healers can be in this corner here and heal almost everyone in the entire area. Remember, Breath of Life goes through line of sight. So you can sit here in these little cubby holes and little weird crevices and heal people. And most of the time people won't even notice you. So like some other ones are like right here. So if you're assaulting a keep, just sit here, boom, Breath of Life, healing everyone. No one will even notice you. You can sit there the whole time. Okay. So with that premise in mind, top to bottom, that's where you're going to fall back from. What you want to do is have an oiler that has three oils in a very specific spot. Two right here. So pouring down on the front breach if they're coming through the front and then one on the back side of the breach as everyone's coming. That person, that oiler is just going to do, 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 do. That's all they're going to do. You're going to have two people on opposite sides. One on the primary breach and you're going to pour oil right here. You can do three as well, but it gets a little tricky. So you're going to have one pouring out, one pouring in. That's very important. So now as they come through, as they come out, you're going to, as you see them rush in, you're going to pour this oil, escape key. You're going to grab this one, pour that. That should hit a huge distance. And you're going to nuke down a lot of people as they come. But remember, the initial breach is not the only place you want to set up oils. Because as a breaching uh, group, you have a decision to make. Do you take a right and go up top? Do you keep going straight and go onto the flag? Or do you keep going straight and go back up through? So a lot of times good coordinated groups will come up here and then they'll go back. Well, what do you need right there? You need more oils, right? So if they come through here, they get destroyed. Next thing. You can see that a well-coordinated group defending this can hold off any massive amount of people. I've been on both ends of this. The other thing you can do is almost every spot in here has a purpose. So you can put a fire blister down right here. You can also put a, uh, a fire oil, excuse me, and you can put a fire blister here if the oil is not up and you can shoot it down. So let's show you that. Get rid of the oil, pack it up. I don't know, it's been 1800 AP right here. The good thing about this position is it can shoot across or at the bottom. So you can shoot them as they're coming up or you can shoot them if they remain at the base. That's the nice thing about that. If you do it right, you can have an oil and a fire ballista up. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, one person can affect the battlefield so significantly. You do not have to be the best player in the North American server to do this. You don't. But this might do, might do way more damage than you solo yoloing off on your own and is getting killed. Think about sieging. Now you can do the exact same sort of thing. Guess what? On the opposite side. You come up here. So you got the oil ledges is what we call this. And then you have more siege waiting for them at the top of the stairs. So you're going to do fire bolts to here. You already have your oils placed on the bottom. They come up here. Now look at that circle, see where I fired. So you don't want to fire like way off in the distance. You don't want to fire too close, shoot right at the top of the stairs. That circle, 
basically encompasses every single person that's going to come up through here. You can also do a fire ballista and or a meat bag right here. So they hit the first fire ballista, then they hit the second one. Boom. That's the top side breach. You know, hypothetically, you want a meat bag and a fire ballista. One to start burning them, one to reduce the healing received. Let's pack these suckers up. I'm going to show you the last stand fall point. Okay, so eventually you're going to run into a well-coordinated group that's just, you know, out muscling you, and that's okay. You want to know your fallback point. At some point, you're going to be outnumbered. Usually, you come back here to the lip, or I don't know what it's called, but I call it the lip. And sometimes they'll lose you. The Zerg mentality is just, just go here, kill the archers, and go back down. So if you go here and do a loop-de-loop, -loop, you can come down oftentimes without them killing you. Now you have to be above, I think, 60% health. You're above 60% health, you can breath life while you're dropping and right here. So you made it here. Now, what do you do on the very first level? Well, the, the primary breach spot, you wanna put, guess what, ballista on them. So as they're coming through, they have oils coming on them, they have fire ballista shooting at them, and they have a meat bag back here. You notice every single spot inside of this keep should be covered with siege. And the reason why is the amount of damage that it does is ridiculous. If you have a fire bliss to point at someone, a meat bag hitting them, and an oil, you could almost kill 20 people instantly. It's that important. So you have those guys, and they're going to fall back once they get overwhelmed. Guess what? You got even more spots here. So fire blows to here, you can do a meat bag here, and then uh, your last stand heroic moment is gonna be in this corner. Okay, so you're in this corner, making a last stand. Typically you wanna have one to two to four Breath of Life healers in this corner where no one can see them. And then the main force, uh, DPS, is going to rove back and forth from here to there. So you're going to rove back and forth, and you're getting trouble, you're getting pressured. With your Breath of Life healers here, if no one messes with them, you can basically just sit here and have a ridiculous amount of healing. Now, once they get oils above you, then you cannot rove back and forth. You need to stay in here and make your last stand by the scroll uh, with a lot of fireball stuff. And if you do these things, gang, you can hold off a force that is 10 times your size. So, recap. Front door. It's great to siege if you're not expecting pressure. It's bad to siege if you have a lot of counter siege in here. The stone, keep walls. They take a little bit longer, but uh, you can siege from a distance. You don't have to have anyone on a ramp. The postern house is on a different health uh, mechanic than the actual wall. So do not hit the house when you are sieging. Remember that you can set up siege on the wall and below. So the top wall should be all lined with fire and meat bags, and below should be lined with fire trebuchets. Make life living hell for all these people trying to breach this. Every single one of them should be in pain. If you have cow chops available, throw it down everywhere. You want every part of this just every aspect of the ground to be on fire, burning, razor caltrops everywhere. Another good spell is the fire rune made into volcanic rune. It'll pop them up and stun them as they come through the breach. So you can place that fire rune like right here on the breach, and then boom, they go blow, blow, blow up. They dead. Another thing you can do if you're going to defend the outer is go to this lip. And usually what I'll do is I'll get, you know, two or three people with me and then we'll come out here and lure a bunch of people in here and shoot and then go do a big loopy loop. So we'll come up here, do to do, we'll heal ourselves, get our health back up and then people will follow us. And guess what? We come to the fire ballista, it collapses, we die. But if it doesn't collapse, you put one up, you shoot it as they come charging in you, they die. It's just that simple. On the inner, you want to keep the top heavy, top, top, top. You want to keep the top side, and the reason tactically for this is the oils and positioning. You're raining down oils on them, and if they come up to you, they're going to take significant damage. Their barriers are going to be up there, and you want to drop those barriers. Once they make it to the top and they overwhelm you, come out here, do a loop-de-loop, -loop, get your health back up, and just don't 
die. Everyone should have a way to heal themselves. So a lot of times I'll see someone fighting some random guy on this corner. Well, that's great, but you're after bigger fish, right? You're after, you're after killing 20 people, not one. Don't die. It's better to survive and let Charlie the Nightblade do his thing and jump down here than it is to take out Charlie. Because if you jump down here and you make it, you can put a fire blizzard up in this corner and hold off for a very long time. And we've actually wiped 30 plus people with the 10 man group in this little corner itself. So you can do it. Oh wait, did I hear a siege? Did I hear a siege? Uh oh, here they are. All right, let's put it to use then. We we're gonna end the video. Guess not. So practice what you preach, Delta. It's game time, Harry. Okay, so they're sieging up front. They're not using a ram. I was going to end the video. Now you guys are going to make me siege you and kill you. So what I'm going to do is wait till they get a ram. Looks like they're just derping around in the field for now. That's okay. We got the tower guards down. They're trying to lure people out. But I'm not going to play your game. I'm just going to siege you right there. And we're just going to go back and forth between the sieges. I don't think this group really wants to actually take this keep. I think they're just derping around here. So let's give them some fun. They're already all burning. Look at that. One person defending this. One person holding off this group. With zero CP. Now, they may not be dying all of a sudden. But when the large blue force comes in to kill them, they will be out of resources and very, very easy to kill. So let's give some blue fire support. Remember, there is no friendly fire, so shoot right on top of your allies. It does not matter. So they're coming back up front. Let me drop off here. Oh, noobed it. That was a noob missile moment. Get in, you noob! Woo! Oh, man, that was noobish. That's all right. It happens. You can call me newbie booby. We're about to end the video. Don't. Uh, come here, Fire Ballista. I love you. I love you, Fire Ballista. Okay, there we go. So they're getting up front. They're getting cocky. And it's only a matter of time. Now, know that if you die here, it's not that big of a deal because you can resurrect at the keep. So death is not necessarily a bad thing to go YOLO out and get aggressive. Until the keep is flagged, you can be aggressive. If you die, who cares? It's, you know, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it's, it doesn't matter how many times you die. It's a matter of crowning emperors and flipping the campaign. So I'm just going to cause them a lot of pain and trouble until other people arrive or they actually try to siege this. And so they're jumping on him. It's okay. I got a fire boost on you. So now I'm going to build up some ultimate here. Come back up more blue people are coming. And ideally, if I was working with other people in my campaign, I would type in here, you know, 10 yellows at whatever keep. Da -da -da. Ah, someone got my fire blister. That's okay. Okay, so now they're starting to come up. They should be out of resources now. We got one guy on my fire blister, so I'm gonna get aggressive. There we go. So they're starting to die now. What should I do, fire blister? Remember, if I die, it's not that big of a deal. So get aggressive. If they die, they're walking back home. They're not happy. So let's drop a Nova on them in the back. Oops, let me get my flappers up. Go, on, goody goot. You guys all Dragonites or what? Oh, werewolf. Who plays werewolves? Hey? Hey, we practice what we preach. So... What we did there was we bought time, made their life miserable until someone else showed up. You know, a group of 10, I'm not 10 v one in these guys. What I can do is slow them down and lower their resources, their regeneration. Because every time I hit them with the fire boost, they gotta heal. They gotta use purge. They gotta do all the things that you gotta do to survive with the fire boost. More people show up. Now we can push out, wipe them and get a defensive tick. Every time you activate the guards, you're gonna get a defensive tick. So those guys just died and gave us the defensive tick and didn't even try to mess with the keep. That's it. Now you just have to do that on a bigger scale with more and more people. You saw I did it effectively with one person. Another person showed up. What did I do? I didn't wait around to be told or just kind of hang around for him to get off my siege. Well, if he's going to siege, my, hey, great. We're in this together. Blue, baby. 
I'll go to the left or just drop off. So, I hope that was helpful. I didn't even plan for that to happen. Now, did we single-handedly wipe 600 people? No, we did not. But, zero CP, not some crazy super powerful build. And it's effective. Just know your job in here and stick to it. Get good at it. Siege, I'm telling you right now, it's the make or break thing in Cyrodiil for new players. Thank you so much for watching.